Oh. Yeah, we're sitting here in the Contemporary Music Center's library and it's an appropriate place to be because I look out the window at the entrance to Neil's Music Hall or the new Music Hall. It had just been opened in just before 1741 and when Handel arrived in 1741 he came here at the invitation indirectly it came from the Chamber of Commerce type of people. They used to live across the road over there, work there and at their meetings they got very tired listening to the cries of the people being abused in jail. People who'd been thrown in because they couldn't pay their bills. And it got so bad that they said look we've got to do something about this. So they decided they'd try and get Handel over here. Huge name. Handel was in London at the time. Now I always think Handel is the type of guy who should be an inspiration to people who fall on hard times because he went from being nobody to king of the world to nobody to king of the world and each time he recovered. But he did recover so he's, he's to me a hope, a beacon for people who are running through bad times. It can, it can recover. He was over there on top of the world and the guys here decided if we can get him over here you know we can get rich people to donate money. And Handel was very conscious of this too. He didn't have a lot of his own money at times. In fact, at one stage, he could have been thrown in jail for a lack of funds. And then again, he had amassed masses of money again and lost it investing in putting on his own promotions. A bit like Andrew Oldberg, except he didn't lose. They invited him over here. They got the Lord Lieutenant of Dublin to send the invitation. It so happened that a guy called Matthew Duerberg, a violinist, was the bandmaster leader for the Duke of Devonshire, who was the Lord Lieutenant here looking after Dublin. And it so happened that he, very fine violinist, was a friend of Handel's. So it's not surprising that when the invitation went across to the Lord Lieutenant, who spoke with his leader, with his violinist, who knew Handel, so he got the invitation. Handel was going through a bit of a bad time he had to change from writing his operas. He made huge success at, at operas writing. And it was running slightly out of vogue. So he'd only recently started setting sacred text. And he had a couple of successes at that, proving to him that yes, he can continue his career in this vein. In comes the invitation to come to Dublin. Same complaint, the poor children of Dublin. So he's a sucker for that, cross he comes. He happened to be writing Messiah at the time he was invited and that's our lucky stroke because that particular work has put Ireland and Dublin into all the maps and into all the uh, books on music which otherwise you would have lost out on but he just happened to be writing it his uh, librettist was a guy called Jennings and he'd worked with him before Jennings had given him this idea for a, a, an oratorio he didn't realise that Handel was going to Dublin and he didn't realise that when Handel got it he actually wrote the whole thing in 25 days. He just got turned on by it and it worked. And they say when he wrote the Alleluia Chorus, he felt the hand of God on his shoulder saying, you know, keep it up, it's doing, going well. So Jennings, first of all, wanted it in London and didn't realise Handel had come here with it and didn't realise Handel was going to perform it here for the first time. He also thought it was far too flippant to be writing a thing like that in 25 days, not realising exactly the genius of Handel. So, next thing Handel had to do was get himself a decent orchestra for this, a decent choir. So he approached the church here, Christ Church, and St. Patrick's Cathedral. And the dean and the chapter both agreed that their professional singers could sing. And at the time, that's an important thing to remember, that the singers of those days could sight sing. They could you'd put a contemporary piece in front of them and they could sing. They could start rehearsing quite quickly. And they, so it was possible to present these things, a contemporary piece of music at the time, that's why it's appropriate we're in here. Um, and he got them together. But at the last minute then, Dean Swift, who was in charge of Christ's, of St. Patrick's, commonly known as the Mad Dean, because he started losing his marbles and all, he, um, Gulliver's Travels, the same guy, he uh, decided that he didn't want his, his, his vicars, singers, singing with fiddlers and drummers and trumpet things. This is beneath them. So he issued a thing to say that if any of his subdeacon and the chapter saying, if any of his vicars did this, 
they were to be reprimanded and, and uh, so they had to get around that one again but eventually they got around that and the thing took place and it took place at noon on the 13th of April and so that's why since the 250th anniversary in 1992 Our Lady's Cold Society come here in the street and sing excerpts from Messiah just outside. We've been here in rain, hail, snow, all kinds of conditions and we're always there to celebrate this huge event that took place. The women when they turned up, we had got to go back to Dublin at that time as well. 1741-42 Grafton Street was built. Um, Dawson Street was nearly finished but no running water. And you've got to think of Dublin. Here the roads were not quite like this. The women would have arrived in sedan chairs and there's a, the place was so enthusiastic and so many people around that the women are told, uh, the guys carrying the sedan, were told to park them up around the, around the corner. There's no room for them out in the street. The place was packed. The women are told to not wear hoops in their dresses. And the men were told, the high society men, not to bring their swords because it all took space. And there's such enthusiasm for the piece. It was packed and a great success. They reckon on that alone, he took in 400 pounds in 1742 for his charity. And that's a huge amount of money by today's standard. Um, and that's apart from all of the things that he did before that and after it, because he went back in August. So he stayed from November to August. I conduct Messiah each year in Hallow, where he was born. Um, I do his birthday celebration one in February. And it's lovely to see in the Handel Museum there, in the Handel House, on the wall in the life of Handel comes to 1741, Handel, Dublin. 10 months. They said 10 months. Well, I think it's nine months. But it's nice to see Dublin on the wall over where he lives. Uh,